Hi, I would like to talk about the piston of the Stirling engine, in particular the stroke, how much the piston moves out and back in again. What I'll do is use an engine that, uh, this little engine, it was one of about 12 that uh, Julian and I and others, Julian made the displacers and the coolers, I made the uh, crankshaft element and uh, this was a freebie from an American company but we made about a dozen and uh, it was for a class of college students in uh, Cullum and uh, they wanted to make Stirling engines so we said no, 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 how about you assemble one and when you've got that under your belt then you can set about trying to make one. But uh, this is a cold engine and um, if you watch that piece there it's bouncing because this mechanism is moving the piston and causing a little bit of compression and that bounce is a good sign because it means that the, there is compression, it's not leaking and also that the friction is low and one of the sayings is no bounce, no go but if I bring some heat to it, it changes so I will apply some flame and just kiss the end of the test tube with the flame and uh, let's see what happens to the bounce oh that's different all of a sudden there, oh, there was bounce and bounce but with the heat it's starting to work differently it's trying to be an engine there is heat when the piston, when the displacer is here, heat is going into that gas that's trying to expand and it will push the piston. But there isn't enough expansion and heat to fully expand the piston to bottom dead centre. It won't run as an engine because the stroke, which is fixed length, is too long for the amount of heat and expansion that is happening. If you look carefully at the crank disc here, there are a set of holes. There we go. So I can locate that pin, a different radii from the center, and have a different length stroke. So if I put full heat on, bring the flame a little bit further in, let it do a bit of heating, then because there is more heat, there is more expansion available and hopefully it will turn into an engine and run. It's going to get there. So this is an engine, like nearly all of them, that has fixed length stroke for the piston. Why do we do that? Well I think it's because steam engines, petrol, diesel engines there's a fixed amount of fuel or steam going in, it's got a fixed amount of energy and there's a fixed amount that we can push the uh, piston. So the length that that piston is moving is fixed in a steam sterling or, or petrol, en steam petrol or diesel engine. And uh, well, sterling engines aren't like that. The faster this runs, the less time there is for heat to get in there and therefore less ability to push the piston. Can it get past bottom dead centre? So the Stirling engine is a variable animal. And what I'd like to suggest is that we have a variable stroke mechanism. So here I have, if the piston stroke is only little, it works the shaft and you can see the flywheel going round, but if it's bigger, it can adjust in other words. What this is, is two sprag clutches. It's the same as the back end of your bicycle. You, know, you can call it free wheel or fixed wheel. But this is a ball race that only works in one direction. So there's one here that works in one direction. And there's another there that works in the other direction. So if there's a little stroke, it can be accommodated. But if there's a big stroke, it too can be accommodated. We don't have to have a fixed length stroke. So I'd like to suggest that maybe we abandon the fixed length stroke on the piston and go for variable. What do you think?